Hello guys. Okay, so let's go with, um, this is a demo of the RAM manager, uh, RxP RAM manager. Now you can see it says PRAM start address end address. So what we have here is like call PRAM. So you know what, we just copy the file. So let's just do this. Um, let's say you want to, your normal XP starts at FFE7, which is decimal 25, and your end is at OAO. 4 which is your normal extended basic. So if you went to the debugger and take a look at it, that's what it would be. Now, if I do a size, it, this is the new size, by the way. It shows FFE7040, right? Which is like 24488 bytes. Now, that's standard. Now, PRAM has a, a feature of it'll leave things alone. So whatever value you put inside of it, if I go call PRAM 0, 0, it ignores whatever I did. And by the way, it does a new afterwards, too. So you can't put it into a program without it doing a new. But call user allows you to do that. Anyways, the point was this. If I do this, you'll see it's not, nothing's changed. It's still the same numbers. So let's try one right here. Uh, let's give you, right here, it says you have start FFFF 24K in the debugger. So if you go to Classic 99 debugger, and go to the top of RAM, which is at uh, uh, F, 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 go backwards a little bit. You can see that the debugger sits right here at F, F, E, 7. The first address open goes this way. It goes downward toward A, 0, 0, 0. So that's the standard memory. So there's like 25 bytes here. Now at the other end, in extended basic, uh, 8040 is the first byte available, and this bytes, these bytes right here, are for the, it's for a stack, basically, for a program stack. Anyways, you can use that area, but the trouble is it's going to cause a problem if you try to use that area. You can use it, though. So if we do this, if we use this file, this right here, and put it in here, paste it, hit and enter. Okay, now, if we do a size... We now have a full 24K. It's uh, 24,576 bytes. It's using 64 bytes from the uh, the bottom and then 25 more bytes at the top. So it's, your addresses are for program start is at FFFF. And uh, the only problem you can have a problem with this is because of the debugger if you're using the debugger. If you're using the debugger, you can use that area. It doesn't matter. Down here, though, it could be a problem with the stack. You know, I can load programs, so like, let's give you an example. Let's go to, um, let's do the program. Like, uh, let's go, what's the example? The biggest one I've got here is him.sega. So let's go load him, disk one, him, not, oops, I am in, not Sega. Let's load that. Whoops. H Y M N hot Sega. It'll load it. Take a second. Even from classics, it's going to take a second. So the program's there. You can see that because it used space. It's got 222 bytes left. Now, normally, this program takes up. Uh, most of the, the most of the the uh, 24k, and the program runs. It doesn't interfere with anything. It will run without a problem. And here it goes. It'll take a while to initialize, but it will work. It does take quite a while to initialize though, because it's a used program. Here it is. There's your graphics. It'll eventually start with the sound here. Come on. I haven't had a problem with Classic 99 not playing sounds once in a while. And I really don't understand what's going on there. It seems to be, yeah, it's playing sounds right now. It should be. So the problem seems to be, yeah, no sound. I don't know why Classic 99 does that sometimes. It just, it just stops using sounds. See? No sound. You got me on what's going on here. 
Uh, it's been doing this for quite a while now. I checked my sound drivers, my devices are up to date, nothing like that. It's got something to do with the interface between the defaults, even though I've got the device set up. But that's the here and there. So let's go back here to what we can do. Uh, one of the things you can do with PRAM is throw the size. Let's try this one right here. You can actually do this one right here, which is paste that in and run it. Take a look. I now have one byte of program space free. It's using FFE7, which is your usually your start, and it's using FFE7 for your program in. So you got one byte of space left. It's not useful, but it's cute. Uh, or you could do this one right here. It does the same thing as that. It just does it in a certain area of memory in a different spot. Now what we have is FFF start address, FFF program end. That's one byte. It just uses that one byte there. That's it for program space. Or you can open it up to full 24K. I allow you to do that. Now here's what's cool. You can actually move the addresses of where everything is, if we paste it, now you've got about 8K, 8K of program space, and it's located from FFE7 to E0. You can move it anywhere you want in the upper 24K. You could start at A000 and, uh, or A040 and just make it 8K above that. You can move the space wherever you want, and it still works. So if we load a program, uh, what's an example? Let's go with uh, something small. We know it'll fit. Uh, those are too big. Here we go, balloons. Oh, and yes. And there it is. And it runs, of course. I don't have any sound, though. I don't have no idea why it's, the sound doesn't work. I have no idea. It doesn't make any sense. But anyways, it does work. As you can see. Anyways. Despite the fact that I don't have sound. Uh, it is working. And so PRAM allows you to change a lot of things. Now I've also got VDP stack. I'm going to take a look at to see if I can actually do the same thing with VDP RAM if you're running from console. It might actually be possible that I'll check. Right now I've got it set up so it only works with, um, with uh, RAM. Now what you can do with this? Well, what you can do with it is move a program around. If you want more space for your assembly. <laughs> By the way, there's nothing stopping you from putting in addresses in PRAM for the lower 8K to have your program space in lower 8K and use the upper 24K for, you guessed it, assembly. So you have, instead of 8K of space for assembly, you could have 8K of program space for XB and 24K of assembly. Or you can mix and match. So, <laughs> This is something new in the TI world. No other standard basic will do this. I've accomplished something that I've been trying to do for a long time. Anyways, I thought it was cool. I think you guys would think it would be cool too. And I'll put the video up. And we'll talk to you later. See you later. Bye.